You ready? It's the realest tiller. Welcome back to another video. This is the ultimate guide to improving your self image so you can become who you truly want to be. This is going to be an earth shattering video. When it's all said and done, bro, a couple years from now, this will be my favorite of all time that I've ever made. The world is a mirror just reflecting what you believe to be true about yourself. All right. To reach a higher level of being, you must first assume a higher concept of yourself, like what you are capable, capable of and what you are worthy of. Because let's face the facts, man, a man cannot rise above how he sees himself. So that is why we must learn about self-image and how we can transform it. And lucky for you, bro, there are seven proven methods that will improve your self-image and you can choose whichever ones you like and, and apply them to your life. You can have, you can choose your favorites. You feel me? There's a lot, a wide range where you can be creative with your shits. Within the YouTube video, you should see the chapters listed with their respective time frames to make it easier to navigate through. You feel me? It's like a book. You feel me? The ultimate guide. If you desire anything in this life, such as the desire to get out of an undesirable situation, then there is nothing to change but how you view yourself. But what is self-image, aka self-concept? You'll, you'll find me using these words synonymously. They mean the same thing. Self-image is simply an evolving perception of your own worth and capabilities that shapes your life's possibilities. Bars, right? And your self-image can be transformed by recognizing your intrinsic value, your inherent worth, and the creative power that you have over your life, the creative power that resides within our wonderful human imagination. It can also be transformed by shifting from these limiting thoughts to nurturing these sort of empowering thoughts, right? Healing your trauma, which I'll, I'll help you do, is heal from your trauma. This world needs more healers, but this world also needs more of people healing themselves. Um, visualizing the new you. I'll definitely help you do that, bro. I'm a visionary. It's in my channel banner, bro. A vision we believe in. I'm a visionary. I'll teach you how to visualize. Why am I speaking? I'm losing breath. I don't know. Speak the new you into existence through these affirmations, right? Because abracadabra means I create as I speak. And practicing gratitude for the new you. Because what's life without gratitude? And expressing, you know, just thank you, God. Praising God. Hallelujah. That is just gonna bring abundance into your life, you feel me? So you're on a journey towards building unconditional self-love, an unlimited sense of self-worth, and an unwavering belief in your abilities, as well as the abilities of God, right? Who resides within your imagination. Now, this is why it's so important to improve self-image. It influences how others treat you, whether it's with respect or disrespect, if they see you as honorable or unhonorable, you feel me? I sound like Kamala Harris right now. I don't know why. But it also dictates the emotional experiences and the manifestations in your life. It influences every aspect of your life, really, but also like the emotional experience that you get, um, including relationships, career, finances, and failing to improve your self-image may result in perpetual victimhood and unfulfilled potential. So none of us want that, right? Hey, pay attention, man. I cast special awareness. Why are you thinking about Pornhub right now? Why are you thinking about texting back that girl right now? You gotta be focused on this video, bro. Why are you looking through the comments right now, bro? I see you. Last but not least, self-image determines whether you perceive yourself as powerful and autonomous or as a passive product of your environment. In other words, are you him or are you a bot in this matrix? Now, I say all that to say this, man. Circumstances do not matter. I mean, you have all the power right now to embrace your current self as perfect, as more than enough, more than capable, recognizing your inherent value without complicating it with external factors or criteria. Meaning, Let's just say that a kid in high school is watching this right now and he wants to pass his math class so his parents don't beat his ass. But the problem with the kid is that he's stuck in the past, the history that he has of 
failing the math exams, right? Getting a D and F. And what I must say to you, if you're in a situation like this, you desire an A, but you don't really see a way forward to achieving that. The first issue is that you're having these inner conversations with yourself where you're like, this one inner voice is like, but what if I don't deserve this A? What, what if I'm just a piece of shit? Not true. Not true. You deserve it. You're always worth it. That's number one. Number two, your abilities. You are more than capable of passing the next exam and passing the entire class despite your history, bro. What I got to tell you, bro, you have the ability right now to reprogram your subconscious mind for success through all the methods I'm about to share with you, bro. And you will manifest that A. I'm just saying. Amen, I'm just saying. Now, here are all the following techniques to reprogram your subconscious mind. First and foremost, let's get this out of the way. Inner conversations. It was my homie, David Goggins. I don't know why I call everyone my homie. I guess it's like, you know, I'm best friends with everybody. Hmm. But David Goggins, right? The hardest motherfucker on this planet. Navy SEAL, pull-up record, run ultra marathons over, over and over, and is never finished, right? Overcame all this trauma and suffering from his childhood, this, his abuse. It was him who said this, this wonderful quote, the most important conversations that you will ever have are the ones that you have with yourself. Bro, if you just listen to a David Goggins podcast with Andrew Huberman or listen to the audiobook, you will know that he faces so many mental battles from this sucky voice who wants to stay in bed all day versus this warrior voice who goes out and conquers and, and accomplishes the missions that he has set out for himself, bro. It's two different worlds, but he has to deal with that dilemma every day, right? Our inner dialogue shapes our self-image and our self-image shapes the experiences that we have in life. So hopefully I set that A, B, and C pretty clearly for you to see the chain of events and how it all works, you know? So if you don't like what you're experiencing and you desire a reality other than what you are currently experiencing, then your inner conversations must match that desired reality. You gotta counter limiting or negative thoughts with limitless and positive ones. That's inner conversations. Jay-Z doesn't wake up thinking, oh, I need Beyonce, I need Beyonce. He already has Beyonce in his life. So if you're a teenage boy who really wants a girlfriend, but you can't seem to attract a girlfriend, the problem is how you view yourself once again. You got to switch your inner conversations to match that version of you who already has a girlfriend. Like, put yourself in your older version's head who's already experiencing that reality where he has a girlfriend. And you got to do it. You got to imagine this to the point where it feels natural. Okay, keyword, natural. I know at first, trying to switch up your inner conversations, it kind of feels forced. It might feel fake. You might wonder if it even works. But you can truly do this exercise to the, to the point where it feels natural. And really all of these exercises to the point where it feels so natural that you embody the state of mind of that desired person, desired version of you. You feel me? Like Giga Chad version of you. Strong, wise, loving, creative, whatever it may be. Now, you can't do any of that without healing from your trauma because your trauma really holds you back with all of these energy centers, aka chakras within you that are blocked as a result of negative childhood, teenage year experiences. All right, this is my story. And I wrote this on my notes a month ago before I even got her phone number, I think. Like, it's crazy how much things have fucking changed. I'm literally mind blown right now, about, about to tell you the story as I read it from my notes. There was this girl who I met at work right? Just imagine a restaurant setting. I've been working there for a year and this girl is her first day on the job. And I found her to be kind of cute. I hope she isn't watching this right now, bro. If you're watching this, I don't know why. 
I never told you about my channel, but when I walked up to this girl to handshake her, she seemed aloof. Like I read her body language and her facial expressions. She looked away, didn't make eye contact. She had, had her body turned away, but she still shaked my hand just, you know, for the, it, it was a, uh, what do you call it? Respectful, of course, and is, is a restaurant setting. So we just had to meet each other. But my initial reaction to that was a trauma-based reaction, meaning that the, uh, the, this, this emotion that just was brought to the surface is like kind of like a heartbreak. Like if you get rejected by that really cute girl in high school, that happened to me. She even called me creepy. Okay, this is like a separate girl, a girl of course, that I'm talking about. And it really affected me deeply to the point where it lowered my self-image and it supposedly affected me so much to the point where this tra traumatic experience rose back to the surface just meeting this stranger at work. It was a ridiculous trauma-based response because how could I come to the conclusion that this new girl at work thought I was creepy just for introducing myself confidently to her and handshaking her. So with radical open-mindedness, I realized that I've changed so much since then. I'm 20 years old now. That so-called traumatic experience happened five years ago. I became much more confident over the years and really just tapped in with myself and the love vibration. So I realized that the other person, this new girl at work, only acted that way because she is shy. She is shy and self-described as socially awkward. That's the only reason why. You know, we love to make everything about us, but what if it's just about them and what they're going through in their heads with their inner conversations? You must overcome the need for external, external validation that was probably caused by absent or disconnected caregivers, perhaps parents that didn't give you the praise that you deserved, maybe were overly critical of you. Um, so by trauma healing, it fosters a sense of worthiness, all right? Your emotional development was impacted in your childhood by mostly your parents who maybe they had good intentions, but they still affected your sense of security in either a negative or positive direction, right? And a flawed self-concept, this is why this is so important, it leads one to believe that they must chase others for validation and safety, resulting in a belief of unworthiness and the need to earn attention. When you wake up to the matrix that we live in, you can just look around you and just see how many people are operating from the base of their trauma and how they go around and chase women, all that stuff, it's sad to see. Now, when you recognize the origins of your self-concept in this way, particularly how it was shaped by boundary viola violations from others, meaning maybe you're a girl and you had a father who touched you in an inappropriate way, right? When you recognize how that affected you, Maybe it was overprotective or abusive parents leading to issues like anxious attachment or a compromised sense of safety. And you overcome feelings of unworthiness once again by recognizing your inherent value. Your past is forgiven. Even if you made a mistake, God has already forgiven you. So don't take that with a grain of salt. Take it with a grain of sugar. Give yourself some sugar. Okay, okay, we're gonna move on. Um, this will just lead to a healthier self-concept and the realization that love is not earned, but deserved. To wrap up the trauma healing section of this video, of this guide, you shift your self-concept by observing your thoughts as an outsider. Meaning, you are not your thoughts, but you are the observer of your thoughts. You are, you are not what happens to you in life, you are the scientific observer, the spiritual observer of what's going on in your life. And that includes the thoughts that go on in your mind. You feel me? You can detach from false identities that have, that have been imposed on you since childhood in order to regain control of your life. This includes just silencing your inner critic. Tell it 
Mr. Vice President, I'm speaking, I'm speaking. <laughs> exactly, like, that's, that's exactly what you have to do to your inner critic. Tell it to shut the front door. I'm trying to listen to the origins. You feel me? Adopting the role of an observer and detaching from these repetitive, intrusive, impulsive thoughts that have been you know, influenced by other people, recognizing that they are not your true self to shift your self-concept and reclaim autonomy over your life. Let's shift to the section SATS, S-A-T-S. Not the stupid high school exams that are like the ACTs, the SATs. Screw that, bro. We're past that. That's the matrix. We're talking about state akin to sleep. So SATS is an acronym for state akin to sleep. Remember this. I'm going to read my notes here. That's why I glanced down. Forgive me for doing that. I know you love eye contact. I know you love my eyes. Shit, I love yours too. Now, the subconscious is the part of your mind that notices and remembers information when you are not actively trying to do so. And the subconscious influences 95% of your behavior, even though you do not realize it. So the subconscious is low-key the driving force of your actions in life, as well as your responses to what happens in life. It gets this deep. Now, what I must say is that when you focus on something, you will recognize it more free frequently in this world, even though it was always present. You ask your best friend to spot a yellow Lamborghini, and he's like, oh, there goes one right there. And then fo the following day, you see a bunch of yellow Lamborghinis on the road, right? That's the subconscious at play. And another example is um, angel numbers, bro. You will see this with angel numbers. You see 555, and you're like, oh my God, I'm seeing 555 so much. And then you see it even more. Mankind is dominated by his last waking concept of self. So this is also related to the programming of the subconscious mind, where how a man sees himself as he's falling asleep is how he's going to see himself as he's waking up and that determines his day right the first five minutes after you wake up are crucial for reprogramming your subconscious mind and the last five minutes before you go to sleep are the most crucial for reprogramming your subconscious mind that is why i bring up the whole sets thing which we'll get to in a second utilize that drowsy state between sleep and wakefulness to reprogram your subconscious mind and transform your self-image. So it's the brain waves going from, what is it? Beta, alpha, theta, delta, that kind of transition, right? Becoming as relaxed as possible, perhaps in the mere seconds before you actually fall asleep, you have these last thoughts about yourself, how you perceive yourself. And while Sats gets its own section in this ultimate guide, it relies on you using the methods that I will mention in the further sections of this video. So I am affirmations, practicing gratitude, visualization, yada, 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 right? Sats is just the foundation for you to use those methods, but they depend on each other. Let's actually dive deep into visualization real quick because truth be told, it's one of my favorite exercises. Just to close my eyes and see with my mind's eye something I desire in vivid detail. It's so colorful. You know, let's say an apple, for example. I really want an apple. I want to manifest an apple. Well, I'm in the top 1% of the population in terms, in terms of how vivid an image is within your imagination. So this is like a mental superpower for me. I can clearly see that apple in 3D. It's so present for me. And you don't even have to have that super ability. You can train that like this is a muscle that can be trained if you try visualization and it doesn't work out for you bro keep on trying because i don't know i don't know why but with practice comes almost perfect you know practice doesn't make perfect but it makes almost perfect and shit we'll take almost perfect you feel me you want to evoke a feeling of that already being accomplished and we'll get into the gratitude section later but literally feeling gratitude for that being your reality. Like getting so deep into your visualization, maybe it's like 30 minutes long, 
you turn it into a movie and then after that movie's said and done and you open your eyes you're like wait wait i wasn't actually there hold up was i dreaming like i thought i was actually there like i was i was literally handshaking people and having conversations and but seriously though visualizing success they talk about this in the book psycho cybernetics i believe and this is my favorite example to reference where there were two groups of people who were observed there's one group of people who stayed at home and they visualized themselves swishing free throws look at curry man so inspirational and they compared that group to the group who actually went out there onto the basketball court and practiced free throws and guess what bro they had the same exact percentages they made the same percentage of free throws how how because that is the power of visualization man cold approaching a girl you have to visualize success with her by visualizing your confidence how are you walking how are you talking are you walking like you talk it if so then that's going to lead to success now as another disclaimer for all my people watching this who have aphantasia meaning that you can't even see images in your mind if you do that's okay i don't judge you at all i'm not going to be one of those people who think you're an npc bro people just have different abilities from one another so for you i advise trying the sound aspect like try hearing voices in your head where it's like um your best friend congratulating you for example and you want to manifest like this new job that is ambitious but you, you you might think you might not get it it's a 50 50 well you can hear hear your dad congratulating you your best friend whoever in this world congratulating you try making that conversation between you and that person and just imagining all, all of that see how the audio side of it goes if you're not able to visualize well you feel me now let's dive deep into i am affirmations also one of my favorite exercises you never want to underestimate the power of i am because in the book of exodus within the bible moses asked god you know how do i tell people who you are like who are you what's your name god and god replied with um i am who i am and that right there just speaks volumes i am who i am but then god went on to say tell them my name is i am so do not underestimate the power of i am and the beautiful thing is that you can get creative with this there's a wide variety of ways you can practice i am affirmations for me i usually listen to ask formation basically um where you switch it up to where instead of i am this i am that it's like why am i so confident why am i able to attract girls so easily why do people love me for who i am you know those ask formations instead of affirmations that's what i prefer amen this is voiceover tiller in the building just to clarify something for you please be creative and please be specific okay you don't have to only do i am affirmations like i said before you can switch it up this is your world you're the creator find freedom on this canvas look at these seven affirmations right here on your screen according to each chakra bro i used to go all the way from my balls all the way up to the top of my head my crown chakra to do all these affirmations specific to the manifestation of 1000 subscribers on youtube i feel like a youtuber with 1000 subscribers and then you basically put your hand on your sacral chakra or you want to affirm i love having 1000 subscribers on youtube you put your hand on your heart or you speak like a youtuber with 1000 subscribers you put your hand on your throat now the author of this post is correct you want to use affirmations that focus on your personal values strengths and goals remember to make your affirmations specific positive and present tense to focus on how you want to feel rather than on specific outcomes because god works in mysterious ways you know what you actually want is the feeling behind that manifestation and not what you actually think you want you feel me so just focus on how you want to feel and you repeat that over and over until you feel it to be natural see 
My biggest issue with people that I'm kind of frustrated with is that they give up too, too early. They give up too early because, oh, it feels uncomfortable. It feels weird. I feel strange. I don't like this. It feels unnatural. Boy, you got to do it until it feels natural. Okay? This is all part of the process. And that is actually why I prefer ask formations because it gets rid of that blockage that you're like that barrier you're putting within your own mind. Ask, ask formations kind of destroy the wall because it shifts your brain and the focus to answering the question versus these flat out I am statements that may um, have your brain doubt the validity of that statement. And when it comes to affirmations, you can obviously do them in your own head. You can say them out loud in the mirror. I love to video journal. So people will sometimes recommend writing them down in a journal. I am this, I am that. Some people do the 369 method because Nikola Tesla was obsessed with the number 369. Me personally, because I love recording YouTube videos, I just love turning on the camera, seeing myself head on. If you want an easy way out, a sort of lazy way that you can use for sats, you know how I said sats was state akin to sleep? You can put on your headphones and fall asleep listening to subliminals. Me personally, I do this all the time, so I cannot judge you for being quote unquote lazy. It's not really lazy, but it's kind of how we would all describe it, right? Um, I highly recommend this, but please, please, for God's and Pete's sake, research the affirmations that are being used. Read the affirmations in the description. If that content creator, if that YouTube channel does not list out the affirmations and lay it out clearly, that should be a red flag. Mark that shit as suspicious, such as the channel Moza Morph, bro. I'm not going to go on a rant about Moza Morph. Do not listen to her, bro. She is not good. Okay. Make sure the creator is transparent. That's all I'm saying. So you can actually use a subliminal that works for you, actually brings about a transformation and an elevation of your self-image. All right. That this simply reprograms your subconscious mind because, you know, people say a subliminal will work if you listen to it one time. Sure, you can, you can listen to it one time. That's beneficial within itself. But I do advise you to listen to a subliminal on repeat because our powder, our, excuse me, our brain is conditioned by patterns and repetition. Um, you can, res excuse me, I'm sorry if I'm causing distractions. Let's just reset. You can research the CIA documents about the power of the mind and how we can astral project. You know, there is this section which talks about the power of repetition to reprogram your mind. There's even a, a patent for grocery stores to play subliminals in their little speakers on, on top. You know, they'll play this music like the Beatles but in the background behind the Beatles music, there will be this uh, affirmation of don't steal. I will not steal. I will not steal. They literally do this, bruh. So the CIA knows, the government knows, the scientists and the spiritual people know. Me personally, water is the best. If you have water basically flowing or the rain sounds, maybe birds chirping, some natural sound that is pleasing to the human brain and it calms you, gets you relaxed, lowers your brain waves from beta, beta waves to alpha waves. I prefer those. Anyways, bro, I'm done yapping about subliminals, I promise. You know, if you have any questions about those, if, I, if, if you feel like I was missing something, some crucial information or something valuable, please comment down below. Now, let's just get into the section of gratitude. What is life without gratitude? Like seriously, the best rappers, music artists will thank God in their lyrics for things like financial freedom. I mean, you see it all the time. Thank God, like I'm way up, I feel blessed. This step is crucial because experiencing gratitude for future events draws them closer to reality. It's all about um, 
breaking down the illusion of separation. I know Buddhism talks about non-duality, um, but also in terms of just like the, the fact that there are infinite universes, there are multiverses, and you have the power to shift your mind from one state of consciousness to another state of consciousness, which is really just another reality, um, another portion of the universe you get to experience. <laughs> We're getting into the quantum physics of this shit, man, but um, that will just attract more abundance into your life. And I, th I, I even think I made a video on that because I did practice gratitude journaling every morning for like one month. I can put that in the description if you wish to watch it. But before you go, please, before you go, you got to know how your self-image has actually improved. So I wrote this note here where, where you'll know if, you're, if your confidence has increased. Meaning that you may notice yourself feeling more self-assured in social situations and making decisions with ease. So one thing about my manifestation journey is that I found a lot of confidence and motivation to do videos, which is a very good sign that I am aligned with that reality where I am actively manifesting my goal where, for example, let's say I want to get 10,000 views on a certain video where, well, I know that's gonna happen. That's just, I know that's gonna happen. So the increased confidence comes from that inner certainty and that inner conviction that I had built up for myself over so many months of practicing these methods. So increased confidence is one. Number two, improved self-care. You may find yourself taking better care of yourself, both physically, mentally, and spiritually, such as eating healthy, exercising regularly, and a positive mindset too. You may notice a shift in your thoughts with more positive self-talk and an increase in self-compassion. So your inner conversations is just more like, man, you're treating yourself kindly. And those intrusive thoughts, you don't give power to them no more because you've raised your awareness. And you, we're waking up from this matrix, you feel me? Um, but the fourth one is better relationships. You will know your self-image has improved if you notice an improvement in relationships with others where they treat you with more respect because you exude a more positive and attractive and confident and fearless aura. All right. All four of these right here, I've experienced, so that's why I've listed them. Now, I'm going to emphasize that this entire guide implies to you. If there's anything you do, bro, I actually don't even care if you subscribe to me or not. I would love if you did. But what matters to me more is you carrying on this message on your road to greatness. Letting my message and ideas and lessons live on beyond my physical body, all right? So beyond the realist tiller, this is about you. You're gonna live with yourself your entire life. So why not apply this knowledge into your life right now? If it all seems overwhelming, if there's so much freedom of choice here where you're paralyzed by the freedom of choice, just pick one, roll with it, see if you like it, see if it becomes your favorite. Don't be afraid to experience these new techniques 100 percent effectiveness if you just stick through it and persist persist all of this is related to the law of assumption by neville goddard okay that is the best resource i can give you because he taught me all this so this is all faith-based meaning that you can't do all of these imaginary exercises and these techniques without faith you have to have faith because it completes the formula. Imagination plus faith equals the manifestation of your desired reality. Faith is a redemptive power where if you ask God, ye shall receive type stuff, right? And when it comes to Neville, his quote was, what you assume if persisted in hardens into fact. So even if something seems false or unlikely, even impossible, with enough persistence and faith and practice of these techniques, it will eventually 
in some way through a bridge of incidents. I call it a bridge of incidents. Some way it will lead you towards, it will lead your consciousness towards actually being physically present in that reality. That's how deep this gets. So I really hope you you enjoyed today's ultimate guide to self-image. It is 4 a.m. right now. My throat is parched. I need some water. That's kind of why like my energy levels went. So it will really help me out if you comment down below your favorite things that you've experienced or what you've learned so far, um, any questions that you have. And please click the like button. This will send this very valuable video out to uh, impress many. And it will change lives. It will cause a wonderful butterfly effect because I'm planting a seed into the subconscious minds of society. And we all know um, the, the butterfly effect of all that. Well, it's more so the domino effect or the, the ripple effect, right? The, the waves soon become tsunamis. And I love the revolutionary aspect of that. So thank you once again. As always, this video is ending for a reason. It's to make true a vision we believe in. Mwah. And that is the realest